This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 10.5. Now, we reviewed the Tab S 8.4 several months ago, but this is the new kit on the block, not because of the size, but because this is the LTE version. In the U.S. is available on Sprint. That's the model we're looking at. Also available on AT&T, and it switches over to the Snapdragon processor. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 10.5, the LTE edition. Like I said, this one is on Sprint. They sell it for $549, that's the outright full retail price. Payments work out to be around $31. AT&T, who likes to charge more for devices, does also carry it, but they're charging $629, and of course payments will be a little bit higher. Anyway, slightly different from not just the Tab S 8.4 that we reviewed a couple of months ago, but from the original Tab S 10.5 because that one was sporting the Exynos and now we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon inside because it has to do with the LTE chipsets. Qualcomm makes the CPU and they make the LTE chipset so in the US if you get an LTE you're getting Snapdragon generally speaking as you probably noticed by now with, with other Samsung products that come in both Exynos and Qualcomm Snapdragon flavors. It's super thin. Look at that. Isn't that just nice? 6.6 .6 millimeters or 0 0.26 inches, 1.03 pounds. So just a tad lighter than the iPad Air, original Air, not Air 2, that is 1.05 pounds. Now, yeah, hundreds of a, of a pound, you're not going to feel the difference, but still, it's a pretty good accomplishment for a nice, powerful tablet. This is from the Galaxy S5 era, so you can see the design inspiration comes from that with our you know, faux metal sides on here. This is what they call the bronze color, which is a fancy name for a brown back, kind of brown front panel, but this is a kind of bronzy tone right here. It's kind of nice looking, a little bit warm, a little bit different from the average. And on the side here, we got stereo speakers, one on each side, slightly shinier grill to give you the hint. Headphone connector. Up top here, power button, volume rocker, IR port for the AV remote control so you can control your TV, your home theater gear, all that stuff comes with Samsung watch on. Pretty much every higher end Samsung Galaxy product these days does come with your AV remote control stuff. And on this side, lots of stuff going on. There's our other speaker grill. This is the USB 2.0 micro USB port on here. SIM card door right there pops up. Micro SD card so you can expand storage. This has 16 gigs of internal storage. As you can see, these things are on here pretty darn tight. And there it is. Don't break your fingernail, ladies, if you're pulling that out. Snaps back into place. Not waterproof. Sorry, that's something that they do with the Galaxy S5 and the Active line, not with the tablets yet. And on the back, the faux leather, kind of soft touch finish. Now, this is kind of almost, an, it's, it, it, it is sort of bronzy, you know, it's got an iridescent quality going here. But the stippling, again, it's supposed to be kind of well, faux leathery. 8 megapixel camera there. Actually, pretty good camera for a tablet. LED flash as well. And then we have the little special points mounting here for the cover. Optional smart cover. On the front, we have the usual Samsung physical home button here, but fingerprint scanner this time, just like the Galaxy S5. Again, like the Galaxy S5, it's using that generation of sensor, which means it's a little bit more fiddly than the new Samsung Galaxy Note 4 and Galaxy Alpha sensor. Sometimes you have to swipe a couple of times to actually get it working, and you do this kind of swipe. It really doesn't support the sideways swipe of the thumb. I don't think that's so important, because how many people can really easily hold this one-handed? Capacitive back and multitasking keys right there. 2.1 megapixel camera up top. And what's special about this, and this is one of the more staid home screens. This is the one that's is set on by default. You can, we could go to one of the wildly colorful and crazy ones so you could see the colors. In fact, we'll do that. So there we are with Color Madness. This is a super AMOLED display. Samsung can now make them this big, just like with the Tab S 8.4. Now, the whole Tab S series came out not long after the Tab Pro. If it's a Tab and not a note. That means there's no pen, by the way, so there's no S Pen or Wacom Digital Pen here. But anyway, the, the, the S tablets came out really quickly after the Tab Pro line and kind of, well, put them to sleep. Everybody wants this instead because of the really pretty Super AMOLED display that Samsung has done a very good job in terms of controlling colors. Yes, you have super duper better than life color saturation here with the usual ability to choose your settings here for how you want the display to look. In terms of color vibrancy right here, we have screen modes you can select from. 
Adaptive display looks at the environment and also at the media being shown. AMOLED Cinema is very vibrant, high, high contrast. AMOLED Photo is Adobe RGB coverage, which is generally an ideal if you want to look at photos and see accurately what they look like, because otherwise you're going to snap a photo and say, my god, I've never taken a picture with better colors. And you'll put it on some other monitor and say, oh. So this will give you a better idea. And then this is sRGB for your, you know, your slightly lower end, but to even higher end these days, Windows and even the Mac, you get 100% of sRGB coverage and not quite full Adobe RGB, so you're still shooting better than normal there. We'll leave it on adaptive. But anyway, that's the big selling point here, the vibrancy and the beauty of Super AMOLED. Near infinite contrast, very inky dark blacks on this and super vibrant color. So Samsung is billing this as a media consumption device, even though it comes with several but not all of the same apps as the Pro line. And honestly, that's because it is so fantastic for watching videos. You can see the viewing angles are quite good on it. No weird color shift per se. You're going to have lots of reflections, of course, and some drop in brightness, but generally speaking, really very good viewing angles on this. So that's the big selling point. And this is a 2560 by 1600 resolution display, otherwise known as QHD. So very high resolution that comes out to 288 PPI, pixel density right there. Not quite as high as the Tab S because that one runs the same resolution, the Tab S 8.4 that is, on a smaller screen, but still very high for a tablet. Gorgeous looking, really the hallmark of this tablet. So as ever, and obviously at this point, this is running Samsung's TouchWiz software. That's their UI overlay and their other added features like you got multitasking right here. So that's always a nice thing. Drag gallery out there, drag internet out there, resizable between the two of these. You can get really small if you want. So handy. It'd be nice if Apple actually gave us something like that. So you can multitask that way. You can Arrange them as you see fit. Android KitKat 4.4.2 on here, which is currently still the latest and greatest version of the operating system available. Android L is not coming out until next month in November of 2014. At some point, this should get Android L. Samsung hasn't given a timetable just yet. The, in this case, with the LTE models, the carriers involved will be carrier approvals, which will you know, slow things down a little bit. Anyway, Pretty responsive. With TouchWiz, you do occasionally get some little hiccups, and it's not predictable as to where, but in general, it's not bad. And of course, it has the My Magazine feature right here that we've seen before on the Tab Pro, the Note Pro, and Tab S. So you've got, you can customize these to a certain extent. Samsung never went to town as much as they originally seemed to plan to do, because I think Google wanted them to scale back on so super skinning Android over and changing the UI, but you can change your widgets here, like here's one to get to watch on so you have quick access to the remote control. They're pushing Paper Garden, which is actually a pretty neat magazine service I'll show you in a minute, and you got things like you can put your stocks that you're watching over here, your calendar events are going to come up. If you use Side Sync to sync this up with a gee, Galaxy phone, you can do that right over here, and you can set an alarm clock, that sort of thing, put a couple of bookmarks up there. But while we're looking at it, let's take a look at Paper Garden, which obviously is best run in portrait mode. And they have a store here and they'll sell you magazines, but the nice thing about this is there's a certain selection of free magazines every month on this. So we had, well, Entertainment Magazine, as you saw right there, downloaded for free. Digital Magazines has ever looked very pretty looks a lot like a print kind of experience right there and you can zoom but you don't want to zoom too much I mean this is basically is a PDF kind of thing here and the text doesn't scale as beautifully as it would say if it was regular text editing thing pictures look great on this it's obviously with a nice screen like this nice sharp and clear great for consuming well magazines not just videos also you get three months of Marvel comics with this. A three-month trial on that. We'll take a look at that next. So we downloaded one of the Guardians of the Galaxy issues right here. You can look at it in facing pages if you want, or I think that that's a nicer presentation, and that's about the size of an actual comic, so it's really nice. Lovely screen again, very sharp looking graphics right there. And yes, you can read those little bubble boxes pretty darn easily too, so nice experience there. Again, you get a three-month trial. After that, it's up to you to roll your own when it comes to comics and get your own. But there are business-oriented things as well. 
And we have Hancom Office, that lovely thing that we first saw on the Tab Pro and Note Pro series. Now you can use it in either orientation. I suspect most people are probably going to shoot for landscape right here. So this is your MS Office Suite. You get the Word, Excel, and PowerPoint equivalent with a UI that's very much like something you would see on your desktop machine, complete with formatting, control, all sorts of stuff like that. So very powerful. It's not just for entertaining yourself. So that comes not preloaded in this case, but that's in the Galaxy GIFs section. So once you set that up, you can download it if you haven't already downloaded it, and you can just run it if you have downloaded it. So you can see the things that are available. PayPal, because it has a fingerprint scanner, Samsung has a deal with PayPal where you can use the scanner to pay for stuff on there. Wall Street Journal, six-month trial subscription. Now it's got a New York Times 12-week trial, but every time I try that, it always says you're only going to get it for a week, so I'm not really sure how that works. Some apps are free anyway, like we have LinkedIn here. Asphalt 8 is a free game anywhere, a freemium game, but you get the idea. So definitely the things worth downloading are the three Hancom Office apps on here and that Marvel trial if you're in, into that. And hey, six months of the Wall Street Journal ain't too bad either. So what's this running on specifically? The 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800 with Adreno 330 graphics. That's right, when this was designed, the 801 wasn't the thing yet for tablets, apparently. Certainly not the 805 that's just appearing in phones like the Note, but it still scores as one of the fastest tablets on the market. I wouldn't worry about it too much. 3 gigs of RAM, a TouchWiz tablets and phones tend to come with 3 gigs of RAM, not 2 in TouchWiz and the associated multitasking applications, stuff like that. They do take up extra memory. Again, 16 gigs of internal storage, as I said, and also that micro SD card slot so you can store your media and even some applications on SD cards. In terms of synthetic benchmarks, on Quadrant it scored 22,278, a good strong showing there. 3D Mark Ice Storm Unlimited, 16,434, also a very good number. All these numbers are very good. On Tutu, 37,768. And the Sun Spider test, which measures JavaScript performance where lower numbers are better, 428, which is one of the best showings you'll find on an Android device right there. So, yes, it's also fast. For 550, I would hope it is fast. And indeed, one of the zippier tablets on the market available in the U.S., one of the thinnest, one of the lightest. It's pretty darn nice. And here's how it literally stacks up against the iPad Air, original iPad Air, not iPad Air 2, on top. Both very skinny, slightly smaller footprint because this is 9.7 inches versus 10.5 inches, but both around the same size, both around similar thickness there, and the same weight. So, you, you know, you're, you're not going to gain or lose anything, literally speaking, in terms of portability with either of these. Choose it on which OS you like better. Of course, the iPad does the metal thing on the back, and it depends on whether you like faux leather better or whether you like the metal. The battery on the Samsung is sealed inside. Usually with the plastic backs on the Samsung phones, that's because it makes it easy for them to put in a removable battery. With the tablets, always sealed inside. 7,900 milliamps of battery in this guy. That's a nice size battery. And Samsung says, oh, gee, around nine hours of use time. So I've found that this can actually exceed. If you're using Wi-Fi, LTE is still the bigger power consumer here. If you are using Wi-Fi, I've seen it go for up to 10 hours, easily nine hours on a charge, which is pretty good for a very fast tablet with a very high resolution, very bright display. This display is bright enough to actually see outdoors, which is pretty darn impressive. Since this is a Qualcomm Snapdragon, it charges more quickly than the Exynos version. That's the Achilles heel with the Exynos Samsung tablets is they don't charge very quickly at all and they have these huge batteries which only makes it even more painful when it takes more than four hours to charge. This guy here, typically if I drop it down to about 40%, it'll recharge in two hours or so. Not surprisingly, because this is a Sprint model, they've added their applications on here and, well, a lot of them actually make sense. Like we have Sprint Music right here. We also have NASCAR Mobile, Bacon Reader, couple of other small things, one weather they've added on, Sprint Zone right there. Nothing I would really complain about too much, to be honest. In terms of LTE data speed, Sprint has shown a lot of improvement. For a while, things were just not so pretty for, for Sprint. You can see our most recent result right here in the Dallas area. 
10.57 megabits down, 6.3 uh, up. That's not the fastest that we've seen, but that shows a lot of improvement. Also, the signal had been, until well, recently, right now, it's just dropped down to one little bar, but signal had been pretty good about 94 dB when we ran that test. Ping time was excellent on this at 42 milliseconds. Because this is a U.S. tablet, we never get voice that is cellular voice on our tablets, so you won't be making phone calls with this. You can, however, use Skype, Google Chat, any of those things that you want to, well, do it over VoIP. So how about video playback? Sadly, we can't show you the latest, greatest movie trailers thanks to the DRM police on YouTube, so we're just going to have to show you one of our own videos. And you can hear the stereo speakers, too. Well, let's go for the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 review. We're a little Note over 50% volume. Not too loud. Again for 2014 in its fourth iteration. That's better. Still a 5.7-inch display, but the resolution goes up to 2560 by 1440. And we get metal Looks around great. the sides. A little harder to tell with the white model here. The speaker's like oomph, but... My goodness, it looks great, and there's a reason why it has a headphone jack and Bluetooth for Bluetooth headphones and speakers, too. All right, now we're going to check out gaming, and something that would look particularly pretty would be something like Madden, so that's what we're going to give a try. This also has dual-band Wi-Fi, 802.11n, and it has Bluetooth 4.0 GPS. Sorry, no NFC on this. You usually don't see that on a tablet. Well, field goal, this can't be too hard. Can... It looks really good, right? All right, let's go for a straight line. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Very sharp, very colorful. And that wasn't too hard, was it? <clears throat> Something a little more exciting than a kick there. So, looks great, plays great. Obviously, this is a great tablet, not just for video playing, but for playing games too, media consumption of all kinds, entertainment, you got it. But you got your Handcom Office in there as well, you got productivity, you've got the Chrome web browser, you've got the WebKit web browser, you've got Sprint's LTE coverage when you're not near a Wi-Fi access point. Very, very nice. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 10.5, all 6.6 .6 millimeters of it, one pound, super AMOLED display. I, it's it's got to be the nicest Android 10-inch tablet on the market right now and certainly gives the iPad Air and even the iPad Air 2 a run for this money. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to hit that like button.